So there we all were, building this thing out, and we felt we reached a pretty critical point by day one to be able to have a chance to pull this thing off. It took tons of energy drinks, a lot of junk food, every Milwaukee tool out there that you could think of. But day one was more like a euphoria. It wasn't really reality. In the end, framing the boat is the easiest part. We all celebrate today as it was a pretty successful venture for all of us considering we had never worked together before. But tomorrow, tomorrow will be a different story. Tomorrow is when everything that is complicated starts. When the lack of sleep and fatigue and poor choices in eating and drinking from yesterday start to trickle in today and we realize that energy drinks can't carry us forever. This is where the boat starts to get complex, meaning there are certain things we'll have to do before anything else can get done. We'll carry on all day, and in the end it'll feel like we barely got anywhere. The more we started to delegate up responsibilities, the more it found that nobody really wanted to touch the wiring. Shocker. So this is where I start the wiring journey. At the end of the day, it'll take me most of my time here to pull this off, as wiring is maybe the bigger chunk of the boat. I remember Brian Latimer documented a Falcon build where they had an entire crew just like we had here where they breezed through the whole assembly of the actual body but when it came to wiring everything up it slowed them down dramatically and it took about a week. So if this part takes you a while it's fine because it took us forever, specifically me. We are using all marine grade tin copper wiring. We cannot use anything else. It's simply not in our best interest after putting all this work into a boat. Know that to be true marine grade, it's all about strand count, but if you really want longevity out of your build, you want tin copper wire. You want something that's gonna last 30 years down the line where you might get a boat like this somewhere and you have to worry about whether or not you're gonna have electric failures. You don't use Romex, you don't use any sort of welding cable or jumper cables, because those people who make those cables don't take pride in their wire the way people who take marine grade wire. With extremely high strand count, tin copper, and a really robust thick coating, marine grade wire is essentially made to last as long as any wire out there can go. The majority of the lights that we install today are all from TH Marine lighting kits, where they give a series of courtesy lights and LEDs, along with some underwater LEDs. The entire theme for this boat is that we want it to glow blue. But even in wiring, I'm only going to be able to get so far today. A lot of the preliminary running of wires will have to be done, and that's about as far as we can get. Because it'll be every other little thing that's annoying to do. Things that nobody likes to do on a boat that we'll have to do in a specific order, or we just won't be able to get anywhere fast. These are Nate's dry hatches. These are drop-in lids that are made inside bleed-out tracks with a port that has a drain tube that'll go right through your compartment down to the subfloor or wherever you see fit for draining. Before we can go any farther with the wiring, we have to get the sidewalls out of the way. The turf we ordered for the sidewall finish is not going to be here, and Nate now wants to run vinyl. He has some pretty good success with it in the past, so he wants to try it again. Meanwhile, Ryan and Dave tackled the subfloor in the back. While I now run the rest of the wiring and start to connect it 
after all the vinyl has been applied to the sidewalls. What is it? That is a power tilt. So it's in value. Where did you end up putting? Oh, he already rebuilt it. So no, you should put it as high up as you can. Well, we already drilled the holes. Oh, why did you do that? Oh, whatever it got is whatever it got. <laughs> Dude, that back is a serious pain in the ass. Oh, they're going to do this shit all day. I wanted nothing to do with it. <laughs> hey, I'll do this all day as long all as you do it. When it comes, that's day when it comes time to wire in the boat. I call it, you don't. We'll fly to the point of wire and then we'll find other shit to do for a week for that one. <laughs> Damn, if I'd have known they ate all the steaks, I would have got food out there. <laughs> That's about as far as I can get with the wiring until other parts of the boat get done. So for now, I'm going to try and tackle more of the intricate installations like the live well system. We're going to be installing a Virgin 3 live well system inside this brand new welded stamped live well from Nate's shop. The Flowrite Virgin 3 system has more or less become an entire staple in every boat that any of us really do. But this is the first time I'm able to run one all the way up to the front of the boat. Generally it's in the back, more of a bass boat setup. But in a walleye boat setup where there's just a big giant cluster of great things in the front followed by a tiller in the rear, the live holes generally ran up front. And that requires a completely different way on how we run the external fittings for the bilge out and for the overflow. This is our premium kit from our website, tbnation.net. This includes all the quick lock systems that make this system so brilliant in that anything is able to be switched out and replaced at will very quickly. And if you're on tournaments or if you're just not really wanting to deal with complications while you're on vacation, this is a fantastic system to have. The hosing that comes with the Flowrite kit has a white PVC inner core. And when you heat it up with a heat gun and then you let it cool in a certain way, it stays that way, which is invaluable considering you don't like the binding it puts on the plastic fittings and a bunch of other problems that come with uh, using the clear, even the braided hose from the hardware store. The fittings need to go in the front of the boat. Now, this might scare you when we're drilling this big gigantic hole into the side of the boat. It even scared John, where he wasn't terribly thrilled we were drilling into his boat. But when you're running it all the way to the front, you're going to need to do this. You're going to have to run an overflow. That is lower than the live well system itself, but preferably just above or at the water line. And we are right there with this. And we are subsequently going to do the same thing with the pump out fitting. That's it. All that's left is to clean off the XS5200 on it. The guys got the back done, which is good because really we can't do a whole lot until the back's finished. We take a break though, because all that's pretty exhausting, even though it came out super clean. We promised ourselves we would eat light, but then we lied. That was the biggest lie. We probably could have told ourselves. God, that was good. We paid for it later though. Eating heavy food is not too well when you're trying to cram a lot of time into a short schedule. It has to be off and then bevel it. So I have something to fill. Bevel it? Yeah, just bevel it at like a 45, just slightly. Oh. The weld has to have something to stick to.
<laughs> Normally we'll keep the stock bow plate and then we'll make another sheet that goes adjacent and kind of curves with it. But because of all the problems I was going to cause and because Nate had a welder and we had a lot of serious tools and skills with everybody involved, we decided to cut that bow plate and then make an additional sheet that we bent with a giant break in Nate's shop and then he welded the whole thing together. That was pretty sick because now we can do other cool things like give this front bow plate a full wrap. There seems to be a trend that in more of these sophisticated builds with a lot of complex steps, the front and the back have to be done fairly early. Whereas in other projects, we would simply just wait until the very end to get those things done. Ever since we started doing these, it's kind of been customary for us to run gator skins on the bow plate. It's the best stuff you can run in a bow plate. It's extremely durable. It is full of UV inhibitors and it's gonna pretty much last forever. We try and run gator skins on um, the more crucial parts of the boat that are going to come in contact with rough things like the dock or to be the first thing somebody steps on before they actually touch the turf or the carpet. Out of the top three toughest things to go in your boat, it's the aluminum, it's the marine grade wiring, and it's the gator skins. Easily those three things will outlast everything else on your boat. So when you apply it, make it count. Put it in a spot you know is going to get abused and feel comfortable about it. What did you do? Never mind, I, don't even, I really don't even want to know. We are using a heat gun very carefully. You use it for too long and you'll actually melt the adhesive and it won't stick, but you use it just right and wonderful things happen with a 90 degree angle stick. Now we got that out of the way, it's time for one of the funner and more intricate parts, the rod locker. And I also get to take a look at what we're going to be dealing with electronics. They're very beautiful. So the one that you have right now would be in back. This one will be back. Yeah, because I have all the, that's like the really, really good one. And then um, this one will just be for a map also in back. Do you want and this, this one, one in front? This one will be up here. Yeah, because it has the, the Mega DI stuff. Has the same harness? Same I, size, that's right? That's the base harness. Yeah, they all have The that. same base? They're all sevens? Yeah. Gotta hold a respect for you, Nate. Three hours of sleep, bleeding, burnt hands. Don't care. Oh. I don't care who you are, that's loud. That's gotta be echoing like five times loud. I can hear that through my headphones. Oh. What? <laughs> <laughs> I think about a dozen things I could do to you make you jump and hit your head. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you drop a drill arm or something over here? Hey, Mike did. Yeah. You ain't had to get him. You ain't had to get him there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Shrug it out. Dude, your face. This <laughs> is bright red. This is naked. <laughs> That's a screenshot moment right there. Your arms are shaking, dude. You gonna make it? You I lost a lot of air down there. <laughs> a lot. So 
So yesterday we were above schedule and feeling on top of the world. Today we were all hurting from poor life decisions and too many energy drinks and a lot of junk food. And just the intricacy of this boat and all the things that had to happen before anything else could happen kind of jammed us up. So we might actually be behind schedule now. On top of that, we're all running on fumes. Junk food and energy drinks aren't going to take us too far for too long. Eventually, it takes a toll on us. It took us a while to get going this morning, and we still have a lot to do. The wiring I did is abysmal. We have so much more to do. But at least we can see this. Looks pretty cool, huh? Stay tuned, because you haven't seen anything yet. Whether you need information, tutorials, products, or simply connections to other tiny boaters around you, we have it all right here.